Hello lords and ladies, this is our cat King, and today we'll be reading more of Choice of Zombies. I want to apologize for the delay. I've just been apathetic towards recording lately. Anyways, uh, enough talking. Let's get back to talking. The car rolls slowly into the entrance of the transfer station and comes to a stop. In front of you is a large paved area surrounded by a perimeter fence topped with razor wire. The paved area is freaking overrun with zombies. At the, at the, wait, at the its far side, all right, within the fence stands this transfer building itself, a multi-story building like an oversized shed. There are two double wide openings in the front into which, on an ordinary day, trucks could reverse to dump their loads on the pit floor. There is a single truck parked halfway into the building with its bed slightly raised. It may have been the processing in the process of unloading its trash when its driver um, exited the cab. To the right of the double wide openings is the employee parking lot with employee cars parked up against a fence. You get to the former drivers of those cars who were shuffling and drooling right near the employee entrance. You wonder where the duress came from. There are way too many to be accounted for by the employee cars. A herd must have come from somewhere else. Attracted by the smells of rotting meat from the pit floor? You don't want to think too hard about it. To the left of the transfer building rise a smokestack, what you think is probably the incinerator, surrounded by a smaller razor wire topped fence. Running up the 150 foot tall stack is a ladder enclosed with a protective scaffolding and leading up to a catwalk about three quarters of the way up. Standing on the catwalk is a figure in a black t-shirt and blue jeans. Chris, you assume. A half dozen or so zombies surround this fence, slowly pulling the metal back and forth while gazing up at the potential mill. They're not being particularly efficient about it, but they'll have the fence down eventually. They must have run out of everything else to eat. The smartphone cheeps. Are you guys here? The message reads, I can see your car. I'm on top of the smokestack. What do you do? Well, obviously, I'm going to text him back. The phone rings almost as soon as the send button is hit. Hi, the voice on the other end uh, says, Tenny through the speakerphone. This is Chris, archaic, you say, keeping a wary eye on the various hordes of zombies. You want to be careful. Chris says. This place is full of zombies. As if you had missed that fact somehow. Inside and out. I think a couple people came into work infected. The incubation time for my body is about an hour, as far as I can tell from the sample size I've had to observe, assuming you're not killed. If you are, the incubation is almost instantaneous. Anyway, it spread through here pretty fast. I knew my only chance was to get up to the tower and barricade myself in. He sounds pretty proud of himself. Has he noticed that he's put himself in a position where there are several floors and more than several zombies between him and safety? You say something to this effect. It's okay, Chris says. I have a plan. I've had a lot of time to observe them. They're really distractible. They go after the near shiny thing, or loud thing, and I can see everything from up here. So here's a plan. See that truck? The keys are in it. I can help you sneak to it. You start it and get it pointed downhill and fix a block of wood or something to the hold the gas pedal down. Maybe get the horn to beep too. The zombies will all flock after it, and as soon as they're drawn away from the incinerator fence, I'll climb down the ladder and we'll get out of here. I think I hate this plan, O'Brien says. The plan doesn't seem absolutely stupid to you, but it does really seem risky. Got a better idea, you ask, Brian? Drive away from the door, blare the horn, attract attention. They'll follow us. We can run them down and then get back to the door with the meat, Chris. Well, maybe you can, but there are an awful lot of them. What do you want to do? I think Chris's plan makes the most sense. Okay, Chris' voice says quietly in your ear, you're going to have to approach the truck from the pit floor. I can see everything from here, and there are no zombies in the lunch area behind the building, so you could climb the perimeter fence near the lunch area and then run into the transfer building. Or, if you don't want to climb, there's a hole in the fence near the employee cars. You could hide behind the cars and sneak into the building. You consider the options. Scaling the fence puts you at risk from the wire on top, but it does drop you exactly where you need to be without the risk of being seen. Playing leapfrog past the cars put you perilously close to the zombies currently ambling the parking lot like stone valets. But if you're quiet enough, it should be possible. What do you do? Take the direct route, scale a fence, and hopefully avoid being lunched upon in the lunch area. Go the longer way through the hole and leapfrog behind the cars. Try running zombies over instead. We're going to go direct route. Grasping your fingers in the wire mesh above your head, you raise a leg and push the toe of your running shoe into the fence. The mesh digs into your hands a bit, but your shoe remains wedged into the fence, taking some of the weight. A few more of these, and you end up face to face with the razor, the razor wire. You have to get over it without being caught by it. You grab the top rail of the fence firmly, and walk your feet up until they're about two feet under your hands. 
you wedge the toes in good and tight and start bouncing up and down. That's definitely going to attract the locals, so it's now or never. With a final push off, man, sorry. With a final push off, you rotate up and over the top of the fence. Your left leg gets caught on the way over and the razor wire opens a nasty gash. You worry that the rattling of the fence and your grunt of pain, and maybe the smell of fresh, salty blood, will attract some shambling friends. But so far as Chris is right, and the lunch area is clear, you head for the inside of the building. The inside of the transfer station reeks of meat and slimy things and vomit and diapers and whatever else is in people's trash. In front of you is a pit where the trucks dump their load full of disgusting things macerating together and zombies shoveling disgusting things into their mouth. The floor to either side of the pit looks like a big garage with faint lines running from the entrance to a long concrete pit. There are six zombies wandering on the floor, but for no particular reason. On the far side of the floor is a truck you want. To your right are steps leading up to a second level, which you can see runs all the way around the rear of the building, ending with stairs that would put you right next to the truck. You can sneak the truck via the second level, where the zombies on the floor might be able to see you, but wouldn't be able to do anything about it. And again, the situation could change once you're on the second level. Maybe it would be better just to sprint for the truck. The situation has changed while you contemplated it. A movement on the second level draws your eyes upward, and you see a solitary zombie shuffling along it. So, uh, still, it's only one, and there's a fire stinger on the wall to your left. What do you do? I'm going to creep up and go toe to decaying toe with the zombie. Luck is on your side. Like a useless guard in a bad movie, the zombie happens to be staring towards the other end as you approach it from behind. You swing the extinguisher. Thunk. The fire red metal gains the added red of coagulated blood and brain. The to zombie topples sideways and cartwheels over the railing. You look over in time and see the other zombies swarm into the pit to gnaw on the new trash. You quickly cover the remaining distance to the truck, run down the stairs, carefully open the passenger door and slide into the driver's seat. Zombies cluster around the truck, banging useless fists on the metal. The keys are in the ignition. You start the truck. You gun the engine to get it ticking over and attract the attention of the zombies who haven't yet realized something is happening. But the fire extinguisher, you wedge, you wedge the accelerator down. Then you press in the clutch, engage first, and shift yourself over to the side of the car, cab as far as possible without letting the clutch go. You reach over, swing open the passenger door, release through the clutch, and jump. The zombies who were in front of the truck are now flat on their backs, being used as speed bumps, and the ones in back are being dragged off across the pavement. You land heavily but unnoticed as the zombies not attached to the truck start chasing it like it's a local lunch wagon. You shout into your cell phone, Chris, go! You look outside the transfer building towards your right and see the black shirt-clad young man barreling down the circular stairway around the tower. You meet at the car. Wow, he says, that was truly inspiring. Frankly, you think so too. You may have just moved from zombie apocalypse survivor to zombie apocalypse force to be reckoned with. And once again, the car is on its way. Chris tells you he's a comp sci major and works at the transfer station part time to pay the bills. And I'm a zombie expert. I watched all the movies, I played all the games, I know what to do. First rule of the zombie apocalypse get to somewhere high. Second rule plan your distractions well. You nod. So, he says, where are we going? A prison, you say. Fantastic, Chris says. That's totally the right place to go. A prison is absolutely where you want to where you want to be during a zombie apocalypse. It has guns, it has food, and you can lock it down. Zombies are much stronger than your average live human, you see, so we need a place the average bodybuilder can't break into. Yes, you say, I going to a mall is a beginner's mistake, really, Chris continues. It may seem like a good idea, but it's really not. Too many glass interest ways and Side doors that could be broken down with enough head bashing. A church probably isn't that secure either, though I guess it depends on how old the church is. Some of the older ones have really thick doors, like three inches of oak, and they're made out of stone rather than wood. It really depends where the windows are. If they're up high, I guess the church could be okay, because zombies can't shimmy up the wall. But I bet you didn't know that. Most people don't know all that much about zombies. No, you say, I don't. They're strong, but they're not graceful. They operate at full peak exertion all the time. How they do that without a lot of energy is not clear, but the human muscle formations are capable of significant feats of strength beyond what we normally operate, and Chris talks stop pausing for breath the entire journey to the prison. And that's going to be it for uh, this chapter, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little weird. I told you this is an experiment in doing a very off-the-walls Let's Play, but I'm enjoying it. I hope you guys are too. That and it's really quick to put out. <laughs> I'm not lazy. I have a lot to do. School stuff. Girlfriend shit. Anywho, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more 
choice of zombies and if you're interested in Legend of Zelda or Pokemon I also have some new videos coming up shortly for those games as well and eventually I will get back to Beyond Two Souls but it might have to wait until uh, the school semester is over I really don't know anyways thank you guys for watching take care